I like your list. That's that's basically my list right there. Okay. <laughs> well, Johnny Candido, uh, we go way back. Uh, we used to even, if you look at some of his 2016, 2017 videos, sometimes in the intro, it'll say dedicated to Alpha Destiny. Like if you watch his over right. press segment, you'll see it in the first five seconds, he mentions me. And we used to comment back and forth on each other's videos. You know, we've always had that acquaintance. I think I used to get on his nerves as well at the beginning because <laughs> I would write these like, these long paragraphs, these extremist statements, but we all, we always, uh, we're always chill with each other. We just like messing around, you know, great raw powerlifting advice, uh, a great figure for the natural community. Uh, I agree with a lot of his, you know, training and life philosophies as well. We've stayed in touch, uh, for, you know, almost a decade by this point, uh, amazing source. You can't go wrong with his information. Uh, Omar Isaf, yo. Omar has done a lot for me. I'm eternally grateful for his guidance, being able to train with him on multiple occasions and just developing a friendship of sort over the years. He is responsible for exploding my channel after I hit 20,000 followers. So I had done a video for him. He hit me up. I did a, like a yoke training guide. And I swear to God, after that video, I was getting like 10,000 followers a week on YouTube. Wow. Now this would not happen today in 2024. Uh, the, the, the scene has changed. If you collab with someone, it's, it just doesn't work like that. But back then, if you collab with a big name, it made a difference. So he really skyrocketed. I, I gained about 50,000 followers just off that one video that I did with him, wow. which is like, that was wow. more than my entire channel at the time. And those followers stayed because they were serious naturals. So, uh, Omar's a really good guy. He he even paid for my hotel when I went in Toronto. He took care of me. Uh, he, he showed me to all the best places. Like he treated me like a king. And he's always been a, a super genuine guy and delivering amazing information for those who want, you know, solid uh, natty gains. So nothing but respect. Uh, Alan Thrall. Alan Thrall is the, the only guy who was able to teach me leg drive on the bench press. I struggled with it for years. And, you know, I watched every tutorial. And, like, the best benching tutorial I found was Dave Tate's Bench Press Cure. But I still couldn't get that leg drive down. And I, I tried everything. And then I found Alan. And I remember Omar spoke highly about him as well. And his tip, it was basically, he was saying that you want to use leg drive to get into your arch instead of the other way around, you know, like arching and then putting the leg drive. It's, it's a subtle difference, but if you watch his guide, it just changed my perspective. And with that, my stability and tightness was enhanced. And I started noticing, uh, you know, just cleaner form on the bench, you know, and in general, his technique guides are among the best. They're very uh, starting strength inspired, but done so in a clearer way. And he's just a, a like a good general resource for learning uh, proper technique on the big bar mo movements. And, uh, you know, he's a family man, owns a successful gym, transition to natural bodybuilding, is very open-minded, is, is messing with our community as well. Uh, we follow each other. He's just uh, an overall solid guy. And uh, his videos stand the test of time. Like they were done in a way, like we were discussing before, that they'll always be relevant, you know? Like his, his older videos are some of his best. Uh, fitness FAQs. I'm going through every one of these guys. You're cool with that, right? I love it, man. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Fitness FAQs. I started watching him at the start. You know, we, we were both young at the time. Crazy to think about it. But uh, I learned a lot about calisthenics from him, like the advanced stuff. Like he, he provided the guidance that the New Yorkers weren't giving. Because the New York scene was all about just basic push-ups, pull-ups, and dips, and muscle-ups, just high reps, you know. It was a street way of working out. But Daniel introduced me to the gymnastic rings, and so I bought a pair because of him, and that revolutionized everything with the amount of variations that you could do, like the pelican curls and, you know, so many variations. He even has a guy, he has a, a course that you can buy which shows all this stuff. But I would say I learned about exercise selection and injury prevention in a calisthenics context because of him, because his background is also with physiotherapy, you know? Uh, 
And he's always been like a calm, calm, cool, collected badass who did his own thing. He never focused on drama. It was about the long-term vision. And uh, I, I feel like our approach to making videos is very similar, just that he does it in an even more professional way. You know, so I respect that. I respect his work ethic. I respect, you know, his general approach to training. He even combines uh, weights in some contexts. He's just, uh, you know, a critical thinker who shows what can be done with bodyweight training, like at a very high level. So I respect that. Team 3D Alpha. I discovered him through uh, Physiques of Greatness in maybe 2011. They had done a collab workout together with this other guy who had, uh, longer hair. I believe his name was Matt. So then I started following him and, uh, I immediately messed with his vibe and, uh, he's Haitian. So in Montreal, we have a lot of Haitians here. So mm -hmm. I was able to pick up on that vibe right away. And Megan's just a fucking badass. Sorry for swearing, but well, the good. Dragon Ball Z <laughs> emphasis, like we had a very similar, like upbringing of interests, you know, oh. you know, you know, when you just click with someone like, this, I, I like this guy. I always <laughs> felt that way about him. And I felt like he was a high performer as well because he was into self-improvement and he made a lot of videos, you know, in his car talking about a variety of subjects, how he likes to learn nonstop, like uh, learning about like a historical event every day, a historical figure, you know, constantly reading uh, the emphasis on calisthenics, nucleus overload. I learned about that from him. So a lot of our training was overlapping at the time, like the, the full body, the overloads, you know, he was ahead of the game, about a lot of these, in a way you can say he was more science-based than a lot of people who call themselves science-based nowadays. Like he was talking about, he was, he was just ahead of the game on every account. And uh, if you check out our interview that we did together in 2017, you'll, you'll see why he's just a bookworm. He, he knows a lot of stuff. And since then, I, wa I watched it. <laughs> he's, yeah. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, he's just a good dude overall. Um, who's obsessed with learning and, you know, good character. So uh, now we got my man, Brandon Carter. So Brandon Carter, I've been following him since 2009. He was one of my original inspirations. I still follow him to this day. Uh, what's crazy is, I saw him go from broke to rich, you know, he used to live in this like ghetto apartment and he would film with resistance bands. And he also uh, did like R and B songs, you know, so covers oh, yeah. of other. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know that, but I remember watching, <laughs> I, cause I saw all of his content. He even had a, a video on his channel called the most interesting man in the world. It was like a, a parody, you know? So I've been following Brandon since he didn't even have 10,000 followers. Like we're talking, the very, very beginning. And I remember when his first channel got deleted. So I saw him restart it and then build up. You know, he was making videos at the park with uh, seat belts to as a gymnastic ring replacement. So he, he, he's doing dips at a children's park with seat belts wow. with his friend Brian, right? And I just saw him level up. And uh, he was also an inspiration for reading because he would, that's what he loved to do, right? He had this immense bookshelf. And I listened to his recommendations like, these are the books you got to read. Right. And yo, he really, he lived it. You saw him like become more knowledgeable, evolve his physique. Also natty, uh, just giving great advice, great workout advice, advice, great life advice. And we saw him rise to the top and now he's, he's absolutely killing it. So just a, a, a person to look up to for gains and life, you know, uh, now we got my man Vitruvian physique. So it's funny, the, the first interaction I ever had with Vitruvian Physique was like a debate about full body workouts. That's how I discovered him. He made a video saying that it probably wasn't the best way to train. And he gave his reasons why. And I got, I'm like a young man who got all pissed off at that. I'm like, hey, but I, I train full body. And I'm like, uh, I'm bigger than you. I'm 182 at five foot five. So I got more muscle. And look, I, I bench more and all these things. And I just had this massive ego. So I came at him and, uh, you know, just responding to his points. And then he, he did his response. And then I did another response and that, that kind of settled it, but it was all fun. Right. After that, uh, you know, I realized like, I, I kind of misbehaved, you know, 
<laughs> and I remember talking to Omar Isaf <laughs> about this in person, like, yo, I probably should have, you know, approached that differently. And, uh, you know, started, uh, you know, I subscribed to him. I started watching his other content. I'm like, okay, he's a good guy. Like, I'm sorry for being a freaking asshole. And uh, over the years, I've, I've grown to really like his channel. Uh, actually, he inspired me to compete. So wow. I watched him compete a couple times. And uh, in his last classic physique competition, I'm like, yo, I got to do this too. So uh, full credit to Vitruvian Physique. I think he has an amazing natural physique. He's, uh, you know, he's, 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 a, he's a genuine guy, just like the rest of these people here. And uh, he inspired me to make some big moves. And you could even say that a lot of my 2023 20, growth was because of him. Because he inspired me, because he was the catalyst, a lot of my success came afterwards. And now we follow each other. We're cool. I think he's a good inspiration for young men. Okay. Got John Meadows over here. He was the first bodybuilder to apply conjugate training principles. And that's the main thing that I learned from him. Some guys will give the generic answer of uh, the Meadows row. I did those as well. Actually, I used to do like seven plate Meadows cheat rows. That definitely works for the upper back overload. And it's, it's genius because the landmine is a length and bias row. So that's the primary uh, benefit that uh, allows you to get a stimulus that's so potent without needing to spend $5,000 on a prime fitness machine. So John Meadows will save you money. <laughs> and like he discovered a biomechanically sound movement that's free weight based. Absolute genius for that. But the big thing that he was doing was attaching bands and chains to stable machines. If you look now on TikTok and a lot of social media platforms, you got people doing reverse banded hack squats, reverse banded Smith machine JM presses. So what they're doing is they're trying to match the leverages of a given movement to the muscle where it has the best leverage at a certain joint angle, right? So they use bands and chains to correct a strength curve deficit or just, you know, improve the lift overall. And John was the first bodybuilder to do this. So you see, he even had an elite FTS mountain dog pack, you know, he would train there often with Dave Tate and, uh, you know, he just came up with a bunch of genius movements and he was actually an original bomb mechanics guru, you could say, but he didn't even have explanations for it. <laughs> he just knew that they felt right. But then when you analyze the reasons why they just made sense, like the dual rope pushdowns, right? That's because of alignment, the single rope doesn't accommodate how wide you are. Like if you're a big guy like John, you can't just use one rope, right? And the fact that with two, you can get that squeeze behind the body. Uh, braced curls. He's the first guy to do that. Doing uh, dumbbell curls on the lap pull down machine. And guess what? Guys don't give him credit either. So when it comes down to stability and resistance profiles for bodybuilding, he did it all. So he was a, a true thinker and experimenter. Now, we got my man, Eric Bugenhagen. So I discovered him in 2015. And he is responsible for me training like an absolute animal. <laughs> Actually bringing back my love for heavy metal. Because I had gone through a period where I stopped listening to it. But because of him, like it just, I discovered so many great bands. And, you know, you can even say that I bought a home gym because of him. Because I was inspired watching him train in his basement. And then his garage and all that, right? So the mindset, doing one rep maxes, screaming, going crazy, just lifting heavy, uh, the attitude of just horse cocking weights, as he calls it, all credit, Derek Bugenhagen. And we actually did an interview <laughs> years ago. Um, we had to take it down because of WWE. But okay. Yeah, that, that was an OG segment. You know, I did it with my man, Phil. So Eric and I go way back, you know, uh, I, everything that I know about that tough mindset, it, it comes from him. Like to this day, I still, I still hone in on that like animalistic energy and I enjoy uh, watching his videos to this day. You know, I've kept up with him over the years and uh, we've always uh, wished each other well. So great guy. If you want to learn how to be hardcore now, Scott Herman fitness, I've been watching him again since 2009. Same thing with Scooby. Um, he was actually my original aesthetic inspiration. I wanted to look like him when I was young. I, you know, I remember being the skinny gamer nerd playing World of Warcraft. And uh, 
like that's the body i was like fuck i gotta look like scott you know and he had the best tutorials on the internet at the time i remember he had a video called my chest workout <laughs> and that that had millions of views even back then which was a lot you know and he just he he always had these blue shorts on the same ones i guess he was batch filming his videos but uh he gave these thorough explanations which was unseen at the time and uh after having like this crazy exercise library he started releasing like series of workout programs like he has so many of them if you go on his site muscularstrength.com there there must be like close to 100 right so that's what that's what he liked to do he built workout series and then he would compare movements. What's better, T-bar rows or barbar rows? So kind of like what I do, but with his little flair on it, you know? So he's an inspiration in terms of uh, physique. Still, natu still natural, still looking amazing. Uh, the guy doesn't age. <laughs> you know, I think that's another benefit of staying natural. And uh, his, his content is timeless. Like every video you watch from the very beginning till now is relevant. So you just, you can't go wrong with any of this stuff. And he's also a, a genuine guy, you know? So uh, next we got Physiques of Greatness, Chris Jones. I discovered him in 2011 after he responded to a video by Ian McCarthy. That that was the original optimal guy. So uh, Chris was, you know, sharing his take on, you know, why bro science might have its merits in certain cases. He was doing that video with Vince as well. So physiques of greatness, uh, I saw that come up, you know, from the very beginning. So I remember I, I was literally in high school when I started watching uh, <laughs> POG. And he was the only person alongside the Hodge twins where I would watch the vlogs. So I remember he would go to Denny's. Yeah. <laughs> he had the ghetto spatula. Like we're talking very early days of POG. And I watched every single video, you know, including leading up to the Beast Mode Jones channel. I actually bought his um his stringers you know you could see it in some of my older videos the pog tank tops nice real big fan you know and uh we've it's it's what's cool is that with all these people here i've got to interact with them over the years like they they inspired me and now i'm talking to them in the dms you know now we're friends right so chris is uh and he's always shown me love by the way i remember when he got he had a situation with vince g i think in 2014 and i, I defended chris because i didn't agree with what vince was doing you know, he wasn't producing, but he was still taking all the money, you know? Mm. So I'm like, that's unacceptable. And I came in and I, and I shared my response and uh, Chris uh, really appreciated that. And he's been a supporter of mine ever since. And he said, you're going to do big things, my man. He's like, I could see it. You're a true hustler. You'll see. And he was right. So he always believed in me from day one. Uh, I always believed in him too, when I saw him come up. And uh, I mean, it's, it's always been a really good you know, going back and forth with him. And then uh, we end off with M McAnimal. As I mentioned earlier, he was one of my calisthenics inspirations. So McAnimal, uh, so he, he literally, first of all, I didn't realize how old he was, but he started training at like 25 years old. But again, the guy doesn't age. <laughs> so he's, he's like damn near 40 at this point. Crazy. You know, he becoming a, a street lifting champion. Uh, I love to see it. I saw him, you know, he used to do like 50 pistol squats in one set. You know, he would do these extreme feats of strength, these extreme jumps. And uh, he, he added a, like a Black Panther kind of twist to the calisthenics world. He was showing that it's not just about push-ups, pull-ups, and dips. You can train your legs. You can do rings. You can do like a lot of these brute force lifts. He, he's basically a combination of fitness FAQs and the uh, New York scene from back then. And it, I okay. believe he actually live in New York as well. So that's kind of how he used to collab with those guys as well. But the difference is that he was willing to learn and improve upon those guys. He actually ended up beating those New Yorkers, you know, in terms yeah. of overall performance and just developing skills. So he's, I see him as someone as a learner, you know, who never stops experimenting. And just like myself, he ended up using the conjugate system. He's in this for the long term. And he's just, uh, you know, he's someone who doesn't stop. He always says it's the mechanical way, you know. So I, I respect his work ethic. I think he has one of the best physiques around. Like, he would even do well in natural bodybuilding, if you ask me. He's just got that structure. So he's very smart. Uh, 
He's not a, he's not afraid to try out different things. He's tough. Just a great inspiration overall for calisthenics and life. So that's wow. quite the list you got there. Uh, 